Hello. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a t-test for a difference in means um, with independent data using Minitab Express. And this is the material presented in Chapter 9.2 of the Stevens Think and Do book. Um, and there are going to be two demonstrations here. One shows how to do this using just the summarizing statistics given here at the end. And then the second part shows you how to do this when you're just given the raw data. And both are easy to do with uh, Minitab Express. So the example we have here is from um, 9.1's example one. And we have uh, 10 men um, who did not take a drug for high blood pressure and then 10 different men, independent samples, who did take a, a drug for high blood pressure, or not high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels. And these are their cholesterol levels. And we're testing the, uh, the hypothesis that the mean from this group for all uh, men in this particular category is greater than the mean for all men in this category who um, took the drug. So we're looking for a, um, a difference in means, right? And so to do this in Minitab Express, I come over here. If I'm on home... On my home tab, I'm going to click over to statistics. There are two samples here, so I go to the two sample. They are not paired, they're independent data. Had this been a before and after type of thing, I uh, would be using the paired, but we're just going to use a regular t-test. And we don't have any data in columns. We actually have, we're going to click here, we have summarized data. All right, we'll do the raw data um, in a few minutes. So this is asking us for each sample, it wants the sample size, the sample mean, the sample standard deviation. So in both cases, the sample sizes are the same. So it happens to be, that's not always the case, and it doesn't have to be the case, but it is in this situation. The sample mean in sample 1 is 263.2. 263.2. For sample 2, it is 231.2. And the standard deviation for sample 1 is 28.5, uh, 28.5. And for sample 2, uh, the man who used the drug, 29.4, 29.4. Um, we go to our options. We're testing that the one mean, no drug, is greater than the mean for... Um, those who use the drug. So we're looking for a difference is positive. We are not going to assume equal variances. And we just click OK. You come down here. There's the test statistic, 2.47. So if you did all the calculations shown in the book, you get a test statistic. You come up to 2.47. That gives you the degrees of freedom. Uh, a little something about Minitab Express and perhaps Minitab as well. It does not round the degrees of freedom. It always goes to the, low, the, the lower integer. So sometimes in the book you'll see a degrees of freedom of, say, 18, but Minitab Express only has 17. That's because they don't, they'll never round up. And, and there's good reason for that. If you round up, you're pretending to have more data than you actually do. So it's not a bad policy. It's just uh, not used by all software and not, not used in the book either. Uh, the most important thing to us right here is the p-value, p-value of 0.0122. So if we go back to our test, we were using a 0.01 significance level. Um, in this case, the p-value is too big. It's bigger than the significance level. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we can't support our claim that the mean for all drug users is below the mean for... Um, men who did not use drugs. It's close though, 0.0122. At the um, 0.05 significance level, we would actually be fine. We would reject the null and support our claim. But we're being a little more careful in this situation. So we fail to reject and we can't support our claim. All right, so that wraps it up with summarized statistics. What if we um, have the raw data? Um, again, with Minitab Express is very easy. Suppose I have the raw data in an um, Excel spreadsheet in columns. The, I find the easiest way to get this into Minitab Express is to simply copy and paste. So we have the no drug column, the drug column. I want to do a 
two sample test. It is a t test from means. So I click that. Um, now the default is valid. Both samples are in one column. The first sample, no drug, is going to be. Um, oh wait, both samples are in one column. It's not true that both samples are in one column. We have each sample in its own column, All right? And the first sample, no drug, column one. Uh, with the drug will be sample two. And we're going to check our options here. We're testing that the no drug mean is greater than the drug mean. So we're, we're, we're prescribing here that no drug mean minus drug mean, that difference is positive. And it's important to recognize this difference here. Um, make sure if you know, because if you get your columns mixed up, this all everything will be backwards and it won't make any sense. So I'm claiming that the no drug mean minus the drug mean is greater than zero, right? So I choose that. I am not going to assume equal variances. The confidence level, by the way, I skipped over this last time. It doesn't make any difference. It does. It'll give you a confidence interval on the um, on the difference on the mean difference. Um, or no, on the difference of means. Uh, but we don't use that for hypothesis tests. We're just using the p-value. So you click OK. And had you run through all of the um, calculations presented in the book, you'd get a t-value of 2.47. The degrees of freedom may or may not be 17. Uh, but the p-value is 0.021. That's or 0 0.0121, that's you know why we're using software, so that we can get to this p-value fast and easy. And again, it's the same as we got in the last example when we used the summarized statistics. It is larger than a significance level of 0.01, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, but it's a close call, um, but it's easy. You know, there's the p-value. One click of a button, that really makes your decision right there. Bigger or smaller than the significance level and, and it really speeds things up. So as always, Minitab Express, uh, simple and fast, and we're done.